I believe uh, that, that the key reason, um, but there are a lot of subsidiary or supporting uh, aspects to that, is that you're looking to the best. You're trying to explore the whole idea of excellence, um, to celebrate it, to examine it, um, and to, uh, I suppose, in a way, uh, respect it or recognise it. I think one of the things is about uh, raising the general awareness of the industry. And if you think about um, the key players, the, the people who win these awards, um, it's, it's a good thing to remind the public that actually there are people out there who are striving to do the best that they can. There's a third aspect to it, and that is that um, awards are a way of um, flagging, I suppose, the hard work that goes in and, and lots and lots of uh, operators up and down the length of the country are waking up every day saying, you know, what can I do to, to make my business better? Um, and awards are a way of, of, uh, of celebrating that and, and of making people feel that, um, that actually the work they've done has been worthwhile. They are, um, as far as I'm aware, the only independently assessed awards uh, that exist in Ireland. So while we have others, um, it's not that their methods are dubious. Um, there are lots of different ways of cutting the cake, but the RAR has set out um, a very open agenda in terms of um, how the awards are assessed, uh, who does that assessment and, and how it's monitored. So the fact that uh, KPMG are involved in uh, the process, the fact that the RAI itself doesn't uh, do the inspections, um, lends it a degree of credibility. Another unique aspect to the RAI awards is that they are, again, as far as I'm aware, the only awards where the whole inspection process is then is both constructed and is then fed back to, to members. So everybody who's assessed uh, as a shortlist, a contender for an award, um, they are assessed uh, and that uh, sheet, uh, the um, assessment uh, document, is given back to them. So. What um, the spirit of the awards is, is yes, to inspect, to, to look, but it's also to try and uh, explain to people what it is that they're doing well and what uh, we feel that perhaps um, there are areas that they might look at at improving. I think it's important to bear in mind that the Restaurant Association Awards are um, the biggest in the country. They're, uh, you, you know, when we had the ceremony um, this year and indeed last year, um, the attendance has, has steadily gone up and up and quite significantly so. Uh, and it's one aspect, I think, of awards that is important to flag that they are a, you know, you get, a, you get the industry in the room all at one time. Wonderful networking opportunity, wonderful opportunity to find out how everybody else is doing. Uh, so it's an information gathering and information sharing exercise and something which is, is about being part of a club. It's really the most uh, effective way, uh, proven over time, to um, do a thorough uh, assessment of the dining experience. Um, and so uh, what we have is a collection of, of uh, people around the country who um, some have been involved in the industry, some have a lot of experience of eating out, some are uh, um, very enthusiastic, uh, enthusiastic cooks or, or have a professional uh, experience in cooking. Um, Almost all of them are uh, in some way or other involved in the industry, but in a tangential way. So, so obviously we can't have somebody who's an operator inspecting another operator, but somebody who has previously been one or has done something in hospitality in another um, country or another area. Um, so they bring with them a degree of knowledge and, and expertise. And undoubtedly, there is no doubt that um, some of the, uh, a lot of the assessment is to do with a subjective um, look at um, certain aspects of, of anybody's operation but um, but also they're, they're, they are documenting them, they are making notes and they are trying to justify why a mark is being given. I'm asked a lot about um, uh, by businesses about you know what one should do in order to win an award. Um, how do you go about getting shortlisted? How do you go about winning? Um, and, and, the, and the easy and, and somewhat trite and simple answer is to say, well, be the best at, at what you set out to do. So whether you're a cafe or a gastropub or a casual dine, dining experience or whether you're a fine dining restaurant, you've got to make sure that you tick all those boxes. Um, but you've got to make sure you tick them um, consistently. And 
one of the difficulties I think is that um, you know that the bar as in any industry is constantly being raised so it is really about uh, about going that extra length it is about somebody coming in and experiencing a, a welcome or um, uh, looking at a table setting and thinking goodness that's really nice it's about being slightly different um, not so different that you're completely wacky but it's about picking up in the in the public mind a sense of it being somewhere somehow special um, and you know I, I, I often am, am, um, am asked and tend to point to the winners if you look at the people who win and one of the criticisms of awards is that you know the same people win all the time I have to say that that isn't true and if you look statistically it isn't true uh, certainly there are some people who tend to rise to the top quite a lot of the time but they don't necessarily win the same award forever um, and it is largely because those people are the ones who are always questioning they're always looking um, and if you look not just on an Irish basis but globally um, those businesses that are um, best in class and I'm talking about New York, Tokyo, San Francisco um, uh, Sydney, it doesn't really matter where it is in the world. When you look at these establishments, they are constantly refining things. So, and you know, what I think a lot of people don't realize, and even if you're an operator, you don't necessarily realize, um, if you go to somewhere on a, on a regular basis, you can see these changes happening. The glassware will change slightly, the cutlery will change slightly, something will become updated. Um, and I'm amazed, actually, when you, if you travel around, and it's not just about Ireland, I think it happens in the UK as well, um, and I spent a lot of time traveling in Europe, you know, you walk into somewhere and you think, mm, that um, skirting board doesn't look great, it should be replaced, the paintwork is looking a bit scuffed, the windows need a bit of cleaning, um, all these things. And, and, you know, one of the things that I think fascinates us all about it as an industry is there are, it's all made up of so many little things and getting those so many little things right, getting them all lined up so they're perfect is what is both fascinating and it's also frustrating. And the good operators are the guys who make it have all line up all of the time. So every time you go, it's consistently good and that's what it's about. What are the things you have to focus on? Consistency is definitely an issue. Um, excellence is definitely an issue. I think special is, is one of the things that people tend to, it's not so much that they underrate it, but they perhaps don't focus on it enough. How do I make this experience special? And I think that one of the things I would remind uh, everybody of is that, you know, you sit down at a table which has um, salt, pepper, knives, forks, maybe a flour, maybe not. Um, as an inspector, what you're doing is looking for what is slightly different. What gives it that sort of feel of thinking, oh goodness, somebody has gone to, to, to an effort, to a slight, you know, slightly more than the average effort. Um, and that can be a hard thing, I think, when you're running a business, you're looking at it thinking, well, my tabletop is absolutely fine. And the truth is, it is fine. But is it award winning? What have you done? If you ask that question, what have you done today with your tabletop or with your front of house or with your reception area or with your rooms that is going to make somebody walk in there and go, wow, that's fantastic. That's really nice. There are um, a collection of inspectors, uh, assessors around the country, um, and they are um, they so they're geographically located. And so what we do is um, the shortlist is published. Um, I send the shortlist out to all the inspectors, and then uh, they decide uh, what they think that is the most suitable um, premises for them to inspect, which is a lot to do with the geographical positioning. Um, and then. There are some, uh, some years somebody has been to one place, so we try and swap the inspector and get somebody else to, to go and see, uh, see them. So that's how you end up with an inspector at your front door. Um, how does it work after that? They have a sheet, which is the sheet that is fed back to, to everybody after the awards. So you can all, um, you can all read them. And if you haven't uh, been inspected because you haven't been shortlisted before, if you talk to the RAI, they'll send you a blank version of the form. Um, and effectively what we do is go through the experience as you would as a diner. Um, you arrive, what the reception area is like, uh, state of cleanliness, state of repair, what the welcome is like, um, how professionally that's handled, um, right the way through the meal, um, uh, and we assess the food but also the service um, on a point system. So you score a number of points and if you score a perfect score uh, you may or may not get a note um, but after that what we try and do is to give you as much information back in terms of why you might have scored four or three or two or one. Um, after that, the, the sheet is added up and you end up with, with a score and there are some concluding comments. 
Um, and again, in the spirit of trying to feed back, what we're trying to do at the end of the sheet, of the assessing sheet, is to give you a number of areas that we think um, perhaps would, uh, might benefit from uh, some sort of attention. Excellence is, is this fine line which runs down the middle between ticking all the necessary boxes in terms of the hospitality industry and what people expect from that, um, which can vary a little bit from time to time, let's face it, and, and on the other side, doing it in a way which is a little bit special, it makes you think, I feel very welcome, I feel very comfortable, and that's all wrapped up with the um, ambience and the environment and, and so on. How we interpret um, the visit uh, is something which is a combined um, teasing out of the direct experience which is uh, undertaken by an inspector and then the process we go through in terms of checking that. Um, so there, is, uh, there are a lot of checks and balances that come into play and a considerable amount of time which is spent on each visit. So an inspector obviously has to travel, has to experience, has to come back, has to write that up, uh, send it in and then in the office we go through a second stage of a uh, second process where that is challenged and um, elaborated on and quite often what happens is that you know somebody will make a comment positive or negative um, and what I'm trying to do my job I feel is to tease out uh, why that comment has come in and to do it in such a way that if I was in the room with the person who owned uh, the restaurant or, or cafe or whatever it is you're able to say well the score was this because of this and if you're interested then we might suggest that you look at X, Y, or Z. So I think the future is is um, is incredibly. There's a, there's a, there's a rich um, mine to uh, rich seam to mine. Um, there's a rich uh, opportunity out there if it can be um, uh, done in the right way. And I think the right way is about everybody getting behind it. And I think you know one of the big hot topics at the moment in, in business circles is about cooperation and competition together. It's about working together and, and um, using each other in a positive way. Uh, and awards can play a very uh, strong and, and important role in that.